Write the full mechanisms for the following reactions. Include all charges, lone pairs, and movements of electrons with appropriate curved arrows. Now, halogenation and halohydration have similarities and differences that we need to know. For one, they both have the same limiting reagent, Br2, but the solvent is totally different. In halogenation, we must use an inert solvent that doesn't interact with our reagent. A classic one, which is commonly used, is dichloromethane, which is also called methylene chloride. In halohydrin formation, the solvent must be nucleophilic. In this case, I'm using methanol. Now the first step in halogenation is the formation of the bromonium ion bridge. That's the interaction between the alkene and Br2 in the first step. Now the bond between both bromines breaks, and if the electrons flow to the right bromine, for example, a partial positive charge is left behind here, whereas a partial negative charge is left behind here. This allows the pi bond in the alkene, which acts as the nucleophile, to attack the bromine here, which is deficient in electrons. It's the electrophile. That will form the bridge. And if electrons flow from the pi bond to that bromine and back to the pi system, we can form that bridge. So in this case, I'll form the bridge on a wedge, but it could form on a dash as well. Now in step two, the bromide attacks the bromonium bridge in a typical nucleophile to electrophile interaction. Now one thing to realize is that the bridge is formed out of the plane on a wedge, so the only way the nucleophile can attack is from the back. So electrons flow from the bromide to a carbon involved in the three-membered ring and establishes in the back. The bridge then opens up in this direction. So the methyl inverts from a dash to a wedge, and the bromide nucleophile establishes in the back. The bromine involved in the bromonium ion bridge establishes on a wedge right here. And that's the entire mechanism. We start out by forming the bridge, and then the bromide formed as a result of bridge formation acts as a nucleophile and attacks that very bridge. The result is an anti-addition of two bromines to an alkene. And the enantiomer would be the result of the bridge forming on a dash instead of a wedge here. In other words, we just switch the chiral centers right here and right here. Now halohydrin formation is different in terms of the solvent. Here I have a nucleophilic solvent like methanol. So that's the primary difference and that totally affects the nucleophilic attack that occurs in step two. In step two here, the bromide acted as a nucleophile and attacked the electrophile, which was the bromonium ion. Let's draw the starting material, which is methylcyclopentene, and show mechanistically the breaking of the Br2 bond. So just like in step one in halogenation, the bond breaks, forming a partially positive bromine right here. That causes a nucleophile to electrophile reaction. Just to keep things fresh, I'll have the bridge established behind the plane towards the back, meaning it's on a dash. Now if we consider Br2 as the limiting reagent in the reaction, methanol is an obvious excess here. So it can act as a nucleophile and attack the bridge, even though it's not a strong nucleophile. Now there is some interesting regiochemistry regarding the nucleophilic attack here in halohydrin formation. Theoretically, let's just say the bridge opens this way. If that happens in the transition state, a partial positive charge should accumulate on this carbon right here. And because of that, it's far more stable than if we had a positive charge accumulating on this secondary carbon. That's the principle behind carbocation stability. Tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary. So because of that, the nucleophile here attacks the more highly substituted carbon. And in this case, the bridge is forming into the plane, so the nucleophile can attack from the front. The net result from step two is that we end up with a bromine here on a dash and the nucleophile establishing 
out front, forcing the methyl into the back. Now this methoxy group is still protonated, so in step three we need to deprotonate it to stabilize this compound. Now if we look at the structure of methanol, it has two lone pairs and it has an accumulation of electron density on the oxygen, a partial negative charge. Lewis bases are electron pair donors, and therefore methanol is a weak nucleophile but also a weak base. So we can use that in step three to deprotonate this hydrogen, yielding a neutral charge and an anti-bromohydrin. So let's do that. Let's draw out the second intermediate. Methanol acts as a weak base, attacks the proton. The electrons between the proton and oxygen flow back to the oxygen atom. And we form our product, which is the bromohydrin. Now, just like with halogenation, bromohydrin formation is also an anti-addition. The only difference was the nucleophile, in this case methanol. And just like with halogenation, theoretically we can also form the enantiomer, which would look like this. And these are the mechanisms. Remember, the solvent determines the nucleophilic attack in step two.